So a while back, I did a review of Rokor's recension of the Divine Liturgy of the Apostle James, which is in regular use in uh, Jerusalem uh, on the Feast of St. James and in the Syriac and Coptic traditions in various and sundry places. Uh, now, though this version is not the exact 5th century version, it's close to it, and it was a pretty cool review, and it's nice to kind of have a look back at where all the Divine Liturgies kind of grew from. So I figured I've got a lot of Western Rite literature on my hands, and it's high time we take a look at the evolution of the Western Liturgies. So buckle up, trad cats. <laughs> And you Orthodox, too. Uh, that was a stupid intro. Welcome back to Orthodox Review, the most uneducated educational program on the internet today. I'm your host, the guy with one and one half thumbs. Hey, Nubby. And I'm so happy to have you here with me today to nerd out about some liturgical history. First and foremost, to my Patreons, thank you. Thank you. I thank God for you. I continually try to pray for you in, in, in the way that I can. You guys keep the lights on. You guys inspire me to keep going, and you fund my addiction. So that's a okay. thing. But anyway, always, 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 don't forget to check uh, the links below, because whatever books we feature on the show, there's going to be links there, be they affiliate or not. It doesn't matter. I want you to read. Uh, there will be links to maybe other resources on the subject. So don't forget to check the description because there's always some goodies down there. And you can always join us on Discord to further discuss what we're talking about here today. And of course, leaving a comment for the algorithm. Uh, I, I know, I don't, I, I'm not trying to get famous. I don't freaking care. So whatever. But feel free to comment. <laughs> I, uh, I, I always at least hit the little heart for comments unless they're really, really cringe. And then sometimes I do that anyway. Anyway, that out of the way, let's get into the subject matter at hand. And that being how the Divine Liturgy of St. James out of the Jerusalem usage not only evolved into the Eastern liturgies of John Chrysostom and Basil the Great, but also St. Gregory the Diologist in the East, West, in the West, <laughs> and everything that came after. So let's get into it. Uh, let me just get my handy dandy notebook for all you Blues Clues fans. Here it is, the entire episode on half a page. Let's get into it, shall we? <clears throat> I say unto thee. So in the fifth century, uh, we get the liturgy of St. James, uh, which was most likely in the form that we know put together by St. Cyril of Jerusalem. Now, there were liturgical forms before then, but it's about this time in the history of the church that everything starts to get codified and uh, uh, normalized, like there's a regular liturgy that's celebrated. Because up until this point, um, though the form of the liturgy was pretty much the same with uh, praise, petition, and then uh, your anaphora prayers for the consecration, uh, there was a lot of uh, variation, because any given bishop or presbyter, for that matter, uh, would pray a Eucharistic prayer um, divinely inspired by the Holy Spirit, one with hope, uh, before the consecration. And so it's at this time now Christianity is legal. Um, it is widespread. There's cathedrals from here to Timbuktu. Uh, and so things start to kind of coalesce and come together in a regular form. Now, that doesn't mean necessarily that everyone throughout the Christian world is celebrating the same liturgy, but just that in the greater metropolitan areas, you have a set form. Uh, now, like we mentioned in the past and before, in the, uh, the uh, liturgies of Constantinople, pretty much, those of uh, John Chrysostom and Basil the Great, uh, are the same liturgies except for the anaphora prayer. And uh, we did an episode on that 
uh, and I'm, I'm hoping there'll be like a link popping up somewhere around here, uh, where the form of the liturgy is the same, uh, but the anaphora prayers uh, are different. And, and that's really where like the liturgies get their names from, the author of the anaphora prayers usually. Uh, and so what's interesting is the way the liturgies evolved uh, whether whether it be a big evolution or a not so big evolution between the two hemispheres, so to speak, the East and the West. And uh, largely, this is, um, I would imagine, partially uh, cultural and uh, dependent on the size and influence of the patriarchate uh, in Constantinople and, of course, in what we now know as the Christian East, um, after a whole bunch of nonsense uh, the bishops started becoming uh, coming from uh, the monastic tradition, and so they brought their monastic traditions with them. And then, in the case of the Western litur uh, Eastern liturgies, pardon me, again, you see that the liturgy we know today came from an older form, wherein it didn't even begin in the church building. Uh, it, it was it was all processional through the city, and then evolved into what we know today. In fact, uh, most of the first half of the liturgy of the East used to be performed on the way to church. So when we look at the Western liturgies, uh, we see a completely different creature. And again, because our starting point is the liturgy of St. James, and we're not doing these massive capital city magisterial processions, it evolved a little differently. People got to the, where they're going to worship, where they're going to celebrate the divine liturgy, and that's where it began. So you don't have uh, these processional antiphons or anything like that. So, uh, and let me make sure that I have my notes handy for uh, the order of the Mass, as it were, and maybe we'll even dig into one of the books and take a deeper dive. But here is your basic history of the liturgies in the West. So, like I said, 5th century, we have the Liturgy of St. James, most likely uh, put together by St. Cyril of Jerusalem. And this is the prototype for all liturgies moving forward. So you have Basil and John in the East, and then you have St. Gregory in the West. Uh, side note, we still celebrate the pre-sanctified liturgy of St. Gregory in the East uh, during uh, Lent, which we're in. Right now is Bright Tuesday, uh, in, not Bright Tuesday, it's, it's, it's Clean Week. My brain is fried. This is the second time I'm trying to record this. Let's move along. So from there, from the Liturgy of St. Gregory, we have three, and there were different rites all over Europe, and I'll explain the term rite uh, momentarily, but you have three major versions of that. You have the Sarum Rite, in the north, which is the Anglo-Saxon uh, iteration of the liturgy of St. Gregory, uh, this is the one that further on down the line uh, becomes the norm for the English-speaking Roman Catholic world, uh, Church of England, that sort of thing. And then the other two major ones, uh, you have the Gallican Rite, which was used in Gaul, uh, and is actually still used in Portugal and Spain in some places, which is pretty cool. And then you have the Ambrosian Rite, named for uh, St. Uh, Ambrose of Milan. It was obviously used in Milan, and there are still places that celebrate that rite too. Now, that being said, when we look at the word rite here, we're not actually talking about different prayers in the anaphora. What we're talking about is different practices within uh, the form of the liturgy. Uh, in different places, not only do you have musical differences, and by the way, another side note here, look up Ambrosian chant and give it a listen. It is angelic. But that being aside, so what we have is different, like in the way in the East where we have like little T traditions that like make differences between like say the Antiochians, the Russians, uh, the, the Greeks, uh, the, the Arab, Syro Arabs. Um, it was the same in the West, and it was like that for a very, very long time. In fact, uh, from from St. Gregory the Great, the diologist, up until the 16th century, the liturgy was completely and fully orthodox. 
and didn't really cease to be so by much after that, but we'll get to that in a second. So you have these three major uh, liturgies, the Serum, Gallican, and Ambrosian, and uh, a lot of what we see today in the English Western usages comes from uh, that Serum rite. So we get to the 16th century, and this is where, okay, so now the schism has happened, uh, the West is no longer Orthodox, and yet they're still practicing the same liturgies that are Orthodox. And so at the Council of Trent, uh, which was like the first big papal brouhaha, so-called ecumenical council, uh, they sat down and, again, codified all these liturgies and kind of normalize them into what we now know as the Tridentine Mass, uh, which is, for all intents and purposes, just the Sarum Liturgy, uh, with a few noticeable changes, uh, not the least of which is the Filioque, which, you know, <laughs> that's a thing. But also, the insistence on the use of Latin as a liturgical language. Here's where I go off on a side note about liturgical languages, and I have the same issue with Church Slavonic, where at, up until up until the 16th century, the liturgical language was the language of the people performing the liturgy. Uh, when you designate a divine language for something that is supposed to be in the vernacular, you're doing a great disservice not only to potential Christians, but also Christians that just don't want to learn a second language, can't learn a second language. Why are you singing in some foreign tongue, you know? Uh, and so, but, you know, people are going to do what the bishop says, so that's what they did. Uh, but also, the reason they did this at the Council of Trent was to kind of push back against the Reformers. Uh, meanwhile, the Church of England continued to use the liturgy as received in the 5th century. So the Tridentine Mass and the former liturgy in the Church of England were literally the same thing. Uh, it's just that the Church of England insisted on using the vernacular. And of course, a lot of us European descent types just, you know, we that, that's what we came up in. And of course, with the Novus Ordo being in English, uh, it's another, well, that, that that's 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 a that's not even on my radar. We're not Roman Catholic here. We're we're Orthodox. So anyway, so so you have now these two liturgies that come from the original liturgy put forth by Gregory, based on that of Saint Cyril of Jerusalem, known as the Liturgy of Saint James, roughly four hundreds. So that is. That's it's it's actually a very simple history. Now I spent a good long time digging, just just getting my hooves in the mud here, trying to see if there was something more to it. But really, there wasn't. And I take a little bit of comfort in that, knowing that the liturgical history we have that we now use in the Western Rite of the Orthodox Church, which is a reclamation of our God-given heritage. Um, that the liturgy truly is apostolic in nature and, and ancient, ancient. Um, and I like that. Eh, I'm an Anglophile. What are you going to do? At any rate, uh, for those naysayers out there who are like, oh, you know, the friggin' East, you got to be Eastern. St. John of Shanghai and San Francisco famously said, never, ever, ever, ever let anyone tell you that in order to be Orthodox, you need to be Eastern. Uh, the Western liturgies, uh, orthodoxy far outweighs the relatively small amount of time that it has been unorthodox. Uh, of note, Saints Cyril and Methodius, yeah, those Cyril and Methodius practiced uh, both the Eastern and Western liturgies. St. John of Shanghai in San Francisco, St. Tikhon of Moscow ordered the use of the Western liturgy for Orthodox in the West. Uh, his buddy, my patron, St. Raphael of Brooklyn, also a propagator of the Western liturgies. And let's not forget that up until probably the 
12th or 13th century even, most people were too far away from the Bishop of Rome to know that they were in schism and were completely orthodox. Think of all the saints. Just in the Celtic islands alone, how many saints performed these liturgies? Your ancestors, my ancestors. Ain't nothing wrong with no Western Rite Orthodoxy. I don't tell you what. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm glad I got a chance to explain that to you. I know it's not all that exciting and there's not really a whole lot to it, but it is what it is. Now, if you would like to get into some liturgical texts uh, that are orthodox and, and not just reprints of later heretical or maybe just non-orthodox uh, writings. Two of my favorite Western Rite books. First being the St. Coleman Prayer Book, which was one of the earliest reviews I did on the channel. Um, link to that will be in the description um, because it preserves the oldest form of the Sarum liturgy. And then you have the St. Ambrose Prayer Book, which was one of the first Western Rite prayer books I ever got. And it does have both the liturgy of St. Gregory and the liturgy of St. Tikon, which is actually the orthodoxized version of the uh, Episcopal liturgy, which is the liturgy of St. Gregory for the most part anyway. So a uh, little differences in the Anapha prayers. Uh, both are super affordable and really cool books, really great little resources. And the prefaces alone, uh, written, uh, well, uh, Metropolitan Hilarion of Rokor wrote the preface for this one. And Father, uh, Father Guy Winfrey of Blessed Memory, who put this together, wrote a really great forward and uh, really goes into detail about assuring the orthodoxy of the text therein. So links for those will be, I shouldn't be throwing these books. Links for those will be in the description, uh, as well as for our Discord, Patreon, PayPal, Cash App. I don't know, maybe I'll put my Steam username in there if you... Uh, there'll be links. At any rate, thank you so much for joining me on this short little excursion into liturgical history in the West today. Uh, I'm continuing to try my best to pray for all of you. I'm not very good at it. Please pray for me. Uh, I desperately need your prayers um, because it's Lent. It's good to pray for people anyway. At any rate, on behalf of Spooky Cat, her mom, and myself, please, 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 please remember us. And don't forget to go to church, say your prayers, and remember God. God bless.